trust it. So no, you're getting me all nervous. I mean. <laughs> well, so let's hear what this man that you say has so, all the gems. In case I drop anything, anything you hear is gem. <laughs> anything you hear is gem. Let's write it down. Welcome to this beautiful podcast. Yes, I said it. Podcast. Chris is doing a podcast. I Ooh. cannot believe it. <laughs> First off, is guys, I wrote a book. I said it. Before you say action. And while we're trying to look at how we can explore and exploit this publication, ideas popped up from everywhere saying, Mr. Chris, I think you need to do a podcast. Pops into the podcast and all the things they call me. And I don't know, somehow, somebody put charm in something and I ate it and this is me sitting in the studio doing a podcast. I still cannot believe it. Pinch me and wake me up. Anyways, but this is the first episode of it and we're going to have eight episodes like this. 15 to 20 minutes, just having a chat about my journey in filmmaking, my journey to writing this book and even the content of this book. And I believe you guys are going to be inspired, informed, educated and brought into our world of indie filmmaking. And I have three beautiful ladies here with me today. Beautiful and intelligent. Beauty and brain sitting in the room with me. And they are, I said stop saying sitting in the room. Sitting here, <laughs> sitting, in the, sitting here with me. And um, I need to introduce them. First on my left is, she's a DP. She's a documentary filmmaker. She's an alumni of Masterclass 2.0. She's um, a producer and fashionista. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, oh, all the way from the eastern part of Nigeria <laughs> is Chichebem Agwacha, <laughs> aka Zara, for the Abuja folks. Oh, and on my right is another ebotic girl. <laughs> all the way from the eastern part of Nigeria oh, is the ghostwriter of, um, before you say action, the project manager of Story Story Global and the head of operations of Sozo Films and more and more, maybe even a chief, chief engineer of uh, Nkechi and Sons <laughs> Ventures is a writer, screenwriter, upcoming producer and general enterprise. Please welcome Uche Seth Atali. She has that. AMVCA nominee. Put that under somewhere. AMVCA nominee, writer of Choke. Look at her. Yeah. And also from the eastern part of Nigeria, also. All the way, even this one looks like a, oh boy, yeah. Like half a mix here and there, here and there, oh, jalof. Jalof of something. <laughs> but still from the eastern part of Nigeria is also another woman. We call her Nickelodeon. Or you can call her, <laughs> well, first of all, she's a filmmaker, a director, and a producer. And she is the initiator of this idea to get me to shoot podcasts. After a lot of people have tried to convince me, I didn't refuse to get convinced. But she tried and she put one or two, one or two things here. And I said, gonna, let us try. Look at us here. All the way from um, the eastern part of Nigeria is Miss Nicole Elvina Emechebe. Hey. And she's the director of this podcast. I don't know how she's in front of the camera. <laughs> We'll mix it like that. So these are the three ladies here with me. And we just want to discuss about writing this book and this podcast and this journey. I want to start with you, Nicole. Yeah. Why do you think this evil man here should be doing podcasts? It all started during my time at the Masterclass 4.0 when I saw Mr. Chris talking with one of the facilitators who happened to be the most beautiful Osas Igadaro. Mm -hmm. The conversation was so viral worthy. Like I could already visualize sound bites. Mr. Christian make a podcast just came up to my head. <laughs> so immediately after that, <laughs> this happened beside the pool. I ran to him and told him, Mr. Chris, you must produce a podcast this year. Hmm. As soon as possible. Look at this is here. a retirement plan. Who? Yes, podcast. In the future, when I have gray hair, why are we sorting out the filmmakers? Was a retirement well, plan, but I was like, nah, like this, the gems that Mr. Chris drops hmm. during the master class, outside the master class, um, on set, outside the set, the podcast space should have, right? Wow. I feel like, I, I honestly feel like 
there has been no podcast that's focused and centered on filmmaking in Nigeria, right? And this would most likely be the first of its kind. Interesting. So, no, you're getting me all nervous. <laughs> well, so let's hear what this man that you say has so, all the gems. In case I drop anything, anything you hear is gem. Anything <laughs> that I said is gem. Let's write it down. Exactly. But nice, so, nice, nice. Yes. Well, before you go on, mm -hmm. before you told me, one of you would have attempted a fail coup was also Chichebem Zara. Mm, okay. <laughs> Zarati, as they call herself. You know, and she had reached out to me to tell me that I know you came into Masterclass 2.0 as a vendor. Yeah. She was supposed to be shooting Masterclass 2.0. Then she moved from being behind the camera to asking me questions. And I was like, who is this girl? And later on, she just became, well, I just told her, I said, sign high certificate because she's learned a lot. It was fascinating for me because I was just coming into the world of being a videographer fame, doing wedding films, and hearing you speak about making an actual film was something I have not, I know, but it has not been impacted, like, oh, this is how it's meant to be, this is what I did, this is how you can grow, this is what you need to learn, and hearing that from you, and the way, like you were saying it with your own personal experience, that you can immerse yourself into it, and you can feel, and, oh, if this is how he did it, if he can do it this way, then I can. Amazing, yes. amazing. Yeah. She now reached out to me then, uh, but she didn't have the right charm like Nicole had to say, uh, We need to do our like me, do podcast. I need to do my juju very well. It might also not be charming, maybe it was just like it's the right, right time. time. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. yeah, gone through a lot of people. Then, yeah. then we had taught uh, before you say action for like three years, and it became a thing. And we decided to get about not trying the idea of how do we capture this into a presentation, the later capture into a book. And somehow, I don't know how you came into the picture, you know, but you just came into the picture and you took it upon yourself. Just tell me this ghost writing, writing, co-writing, supporting Chris writing process? Okay, um, when I came to the Masterclass 2.0, I had been into writing for like a couple of years. And when Masterclass came, I didn't understand what they were saying. <laughs> I just heard millions, 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 <laughs> you know? But in the midst of all of that, I remember we had a conversation, you were talking about, oh, you know, you don't, you don't have to be a producer. Maybe you're here to like find your calling in writing. And you were like, okay, you were thinking of writing a book. And then I remember we were talking about how you like you can't package this class for everybody. And you said, okay, maybe we can like just have meetings. And by then, when talking about having it as a book, we said, let's just put it down so that we can, be you know. And from there, we like, okay, we can actually record this. And before you know the writing started, we had the first draft. He knew exactly what he wanted. And he wanted it to be in his voice. He wanted it to be like he was talking to you. Like when you pick up the book and you're reading it, you feel like Mr. Peace is actually talking to you. And it was such an honor to take all of these thoughts and make it into something like this. Yeah, yeah. It's been years. Like this is 2020. Years. 2020 now, four years. Like, four years. Mr. Peace has so much he wants to teach people. If you leave Mr. Chris, you can do masterclass for 1,000 yes. people. Yes. <laughs> we do one begging without doing Let us close because of the timing. But now with this book, wherever you are, you can go through Mr. Chris's his failures, his successes, the partnerships he's made, how his, his thought process and being able to put it together, it's been like one of the highlights of my life. When I saw this cover, I remember when we picked up, it's like, ah, her book is out. <laughs> like, we have a, different a book. Feeling, it's a different feeling. It's a different feeling, a different feeling. feeling so book, actually. When, when, the, when the idea first came, I was thinking, I remember I was teaching in Home Vida in 2018, I think it was at Pan Atlantic University. And I kept saying, there was a young guy, he lives in Ibadan, I kept saying, Mr. Chris, I spoke about this, I want to write a yeah. book very soon about filmmaking. I guess whenever I'm going to write this book, Mr. Chris, I can't remember his name. He said, count me in, I'm going to, he's one I said, I'm going to write with you. Mm. He told me that day, but I just lost contact with him, I can't remember. I hope you're watching this video, if you are, please send me a comment in the comment section, say something. You know, and remembering that guy saying he was ready to join me, pushed me till you came into the picture. Yeah. And it took two years from when I taught him and that time to when you came in. But I now thought of writing, why don't I do voice notes? So I used to take, if you know me a lot, I like to take long walks. Mm -hmm. I would walk all of Airport Road in Abuja. And I would just put on my earpiece and I would just be talking to my phone and just recording, recording the ideas. And I would do it for like three, four times and pick the best one and send to Uche. I say, transcribe it and send it back to me. Then she would send it back to me. I'll say, this is what I said, man. No, this is, you know. But, the, 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 the fact is, which is what we're going to discuss in the next episode about motive, because I was very clear on what I wanted to achieve. Mm, yeah. And it came at a point in my life where I'd run a production company for 10 years, and 
the company wasn't growing as fast as it could because I was mixing my passion with my purpose, with my profit drive. And it wasn't just making sense. So I would do projects, make money, and use the money to do impact projects. And people that were around me were wondering if I was running. And because I was a church boy, my entire mentality is impacting people. We do not know how to process profit drive. We see it as a selfish thing. Why are you just thinking about money, money, money? Money is the root of all evil. But no, even the Holy Book says that the love of money, when you allow money to dictate your affection and your affinity, then that's the root of evil. Mm -hmm. But money in itself is an answer to everything. Having said that, we have to now separate the business from the impact. And so we formed a company, an organization called Code 360, which now has a publication arm where Uche was able to volunteer with and now be able to create this book. So it's an amazing journey. And I want to say thank you, Uche. Thank, thank you, you for Elizabeth. being there. Thank you, Nicole, for taking, I know who you are, how shy you can be. For, I wonder what you fought with internally to walk up to me at that poolside to say what you said. And thank you, Zara, for not giving up after saying it. And I'm sure it was a prayer that brought in Nicole yeah. <laughs> to come and say that, you know. So, I mean, when she approached me, she was like, when she said, I was like, yes, let's do it. <laughs> yes. yeah. Well, I'm still going to do that my real podcast where I want to insult Nigerian folks. <laughs> People, I'm coming for you, all of you, including myself. All the things we have made, I'm going to watch it and trash it. But although I understand that it's work in progress, but yeah. having said that, um, um, so who, who do you think is the target audience for 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 this book? Which I think the target audience is for anyone who wants to make a film who doesn't understand what making a film in an economy like ours entails. So it cuts across whether you've made a film before and failed, whether you're trying to understand what making a film is like, whether you just want to see if you have what it takes to make a film. Through this book, you can understand, you can answer those questions for yourself before you even start the journey. Mm -hmm. Amazing, amazing. And so, um, what do you think we're trying to achieve with this podcast? Um, first of all, we're going to break down the different components of this fabulous book. Um, this book is, should I say, built by Mr. Chris's seven M's of filmmaking. Um, each episode is going to talk about an M. Mm. This podcast is basically going to encapsulate everything that an indie filmmaker would need to achieve success in this mm. career. So one thing I am very clear on is my purpose for, for living. And, mm. and it's clear, I, one, one line of my life is to leave people better than I meet them. Mm. You know, and, and that has helped me realize that one of the limitations we when I say we, I mean the black world have, is we experience things and we shield people from learning from our lessons. Mm -hmm. And so we have multiple people making the same error over the years. Mm -hmm. And it makes us feel important because it keeps us as kings in our zone. Mm -hmm. But what I don't understand is you could be a king in a blind kingdom and you can also be a king where everybody has sight, mm -hmm. but you're just, you have a clearer sight. So why don't you go for the bigger picture? Mm -hmm. You know, and it made me start thinking about how to demystify filmmaking. People do not know this. I started up as a writer. My first aim into film was as a writer. And what made me a producer was I got tired of writing and not finding anybody that wanted my script or wanted to even look at my script or wanted to even produce my script. Mm -hmm. I had written it then. There were no social media. It was emails, my spaces, and maybe later on Facebook. And I would call and I would chase and pff, nothing. And then I said to myself, why don't I raise the money myself to shoot my film? Why don't I get the initiative and do this thing myself? And that brought me to this point where I can't even remember if I'm a writer anymore. You know, I know that somewhere in me I want to write, but no time to find that. You know, but I said to myself that the day I break into this space, one thing I'm going to do, and I promise God and humanity, is to demystify the whole process. State it from my own perspective, my own, my own lens what I think filmmaking is, how filmmaking should be, how filmmaking has been for me. So people can read it, learn it. So you can make, everyone's gonna make mistakes, but make other mistakes, don't make mm -hmm. my mistakes. Mm -hmm. At least go in knowing my mistake, then make other mistakes. Okay. So that way we're able to build, because you see, they make a car in Toyota for 2020, and they go back and they look at the mistakes of 2020 car, they make a better model in 2021, make a better model in 2022, and they keep making the cars get better. But what happened in Nigeria is we keep making different years, but same model, because, we don't learn from the person who made the wheel is hiding his wheel concept for the person who's making the engine, who's hiding his own for the person making the gear. Mm -hmm. So we're not working together. We're not making the vision and the idea become an innovation where it's able to grow and progress. And that's what this book is about. This book is, is documenting my journey, learning it, turning it into principles, 
and precepts so people can read them and learn. Because anybody can make a film in America because there's a system. Anybody cannot make a film in Nigeria. If you make, anybody who starts a film from scratch to end in Nigeria is a warrior. Anybody that writes a script and the film comes out, no matter... See, I, I think in this, in this book that it's even difficult to make a bad film. It's super difficult to get a film to come out. I've made a film that's not come out till today. Mm. I made it 14 years ago. It's not out till today. Because we couldn't finish the film. Mm. To finish a film is a major task. That to finish it well is a greater task. But it's a major task to finish a film. So this is supposed to demystify this, help you read. Are you a filmmaker? Are you a film investor? Are you a film lover? Because some people are not investors or filmmakers or whatever, or film consumers, but they just love the whole idea of Nollywood film. And that's what this book is supposed to help you, to just give you a glance into the industry, understand the working. So it's called a handbook for indie filmmaker. Because what happens in other established um, industries is the monies come with structure. So the structure puts you on your toes. But in film, nobody has anything to handle. Remember when I was looking for in insurance for a film of mine I did four years ago, the insurance company said to me, we have nothing tangible in the Nigerian film industry to hold on to. Everything feels superficial. Everything feels intangible. And I don't blame them. It's true. You can, you can insure your film in the UK. You can insure your film in America. I don't mean your equipment. I mean your film. You can't do that here. What are they going to insure? Mm. When the producer is spending from his card, when the investor is sending money to the producer's direct fund, when the producer is the one that is paying the money, the PM doesn't even know the budget of the film. The actors don't know, nobody knows anything. Everything rises and falls on one person who might be the producer, director, and writer, and even star actor. Mm. So it's a small, it's a shop, it's a kiosk. Mm. It's not an industry. So, but with this, you can now see how it works and understand that this film business that has lived for 35 years can be greater if we all can compare our notes and think about an industry beyond our companies. So this is me saying it first. And I am calling out my other colleagues and partners and counterparts to do the same. Because mm -hmm. this is Chris's perspective. Mm -hmm. But then there's a Ramsey's perspective. Then there's a Charles's perspective. Then there's a... I don't want to call people that I don't want to call, but there are other perspectives. Every call people, I'm sure, will not be angry with me calling their names here. You know, but there are other perspectives. So if we all tell from this perspective that we can have a full industry where these young people like you, Nicole and Zara and Uche, can rise up and say, I'm going to have one old man, anyway, I'm older than <laughs> You know, can rise up and say, okay, let's make a film. So if you're going to make a living in bondage tomorrow, it's going to be better than my living in bondage because you will not make the errors I made. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are other errors that will be made. But by the time you're done, the people that come after you will make a better film than you've made. Then imagine when Hollywood will be in 2060. So yeah. what is the reason why people hold this information? Fear. Mm. So let me tell you something. I think Nollywood started on the backs of society rejects. So a lot of people who were... When I was younger, you couldn't say you wanted to make film. Because it was for the retards, it was for the rejects mm. of the society. Yeah. Yeah. Now you see people who are organized doing film, people mm. who are schooled. Then it was people who didn't have anything. Mm. So this was the only thing that worked for them. And when you have one live line, you don't share it. It's like surviving a night crash. You don't share your, your, your gas mask. Mm. You don't share your parachute. You save yourself first. So, but you've been saved 30 years. <laughs> It's, you're okay now. Mm. You are okay. But you see, the lintels have held the rats to the, to the jar. They don't believe. They've removed the cover, but the rat can't jump out because it's used to hitting something every time it jumps. So mm. there's a mental uh, limitation. So there's a lot of self-esteem. And I'm not saying this. I'm not, I'm not pointing figures. I'm even pointing to myself. We have a lot of self-esteem issues image issues, self-image issues that is not allowing us believe in an industry beyond ourselves. We believe in the industry as far as it favors us. The moment it doesn't favor us, it's failing. Yeah. You can be failing and the industry be succeeding. It's very possible. Yeah. There are bank managers and bank owners who failed, but the banking industry succeeded. Oh, yeah. 
They are engineering their oil exploration processes that failed, but there are oil companies that succeeded, a sector that succeeded. Mm -hmm. But when we fail, we, I will assume it's the entire industry that has failed. Streamers have come to Nigeria, some of them are even living and have left. But that doesn't mean it's a failure because as we speak, the highest grossing film has not tapped up to 1% of the market. Mm -hmm. The highest streaming platform has not streamed in front of more than 5% of the market. As we speak till now, in 2024. So there's so much market untapped. But what do we do? We do what we call in Southern Gary Palace, I better pass my neighbor. So I'm just looking at what Nicole is doing, what you're doing, and if I'm better than you, then I'm fine. Yeah. And what happens is, it brings me back to my quote of success and excellence. We become successful, but we don't go to the fullest capacity that we have. I keep saying because this is where it is. So there is a fundamental issue. And this is not a memoir, by the way. It's just that we, 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 we live in an industry, I want to end with this. We live in an industry where people learn in America and the UK and are trying to force those principles in a different kind of economy. Because it can't work. Because it can't work. work yeah. Have you thought about you travel to some countries and your power plug does not work in the country? Mm. Yeah. You've got to get the converter. Yeah. So when you go to film school, you need to get a converter to apply to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So this book is a converter. Yeah. It's telling you how to take those things you've learned to convert it to what is applicable here. here in Nigeria. It's not saying what you've learned is bad, but it's saying it might not apply directly. Mm. It needs a little converter. Mm. I've sent this book to producers that I respect, to professors and doctors of media that I respect, and they've come back to say to me, Chris, this is not a textbook. This is you taking us by the hands and walking us through the industry. Yeah. And one person asked me one day after he wrote his script, I said, why did you write this book? And I said, so that people will know that Nollywood is not smokes and mirrors. Hmm. There's substance in Nollywood, yeah. but you just can't approach it like you approach South Korea or UK or the US. Mm -hmm. You've got to approach Nigeria as Nigeria. Mm. And this is saying to us, we should stop sending out our raw materials to be refined for us. But we should refine our raw material, then send it out refined. Mm. That is the only way to keep a productive economy. So the creativity that we have, which is Nigeria and indigenous, indigenous, should be refined indigenously mm. before it is exported. Final quote. I was having a conversation with the director one day and he said to me about one DOP, who we mostly respect in Nigeria. And he said he was a great DOP. He went to film school and came back as a very good DOP. Two positive statements, but look at this context of these things that I said now. Because a very good sounds very bad. What he was trying to say was, he used to shoot with the liberty in his creativity. Mm. Anything was possible to him creatively. He went to a school where he was now indoctrinated mm. to think this is good, and this is bad. Now he comes back and he now has internal drama that is limiting his creativity. Oh. Now he will win the awards because the people who wrote those books are the ones that mark you in the academy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the question I ask everybody is that what school did Einstein go to? Mm -hmm. What school did Faraday go to? The people mm -hmm. who we study, what school did they go to? The school of their own mind. Mm -hmm. They refined their own creativity, made it readable for us. So we can now read it, learn from them, then also refine our own, add it to it, layer upon layer, layer upon layer, till we get a great industry. That's what this is all about. Why do you think the Netflixes and Amazons and Coke talk about Nigeria? Why do you think the South African business have come to create a hub through MTN and DSTV and Co in, in Nigeria? You think they're stupid? There's a market. There are 220 million entertaining, loving, entertainment loving people. Have you seen your security man at home on his Facebook watching on YouTube watching films? He's supposed to be a poor man who has issues. Sick mother, pregnant wife, house rent. But he still wants to have his two hours entertainment undisturbed. We are a ready market. And the world needs to see that. But this book is to show that we may not have the Hollywood structure or the Bollywood structure, but we have our own kind of structure, yeah. which is peculiar to our civilization, our exposure, and our creativity. Yeah. And to know how to now plug in without getting hurt. Yeah. So this book will show you the, the things to look out for.
to be able to know the kind of investments to put your money in. The aim is so that people can know that Nigeria is more than just a scattered film market. Mm. So everywhere books are sold. Yeah, we're going everywhere books are sold. <laughs> going global. Grab your copy now. Grab your copy <laughs> now. Yes. Sir. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys. Hope to watch the many seven episodes and um, please give us good comments. If you don't have good comments, move on. <laughs>